Good afternoon, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about a very important topic, making art print. For many of you, perhaps you are wondering how to make art print or if it's worth it or if it will damage your reputation as an artist. And today I think I will dedicate 10 minutes talking about it and share with you some of my experiences and expertise and stories and hopefully it can help you make this important decision because it can be your one of the most important income stream in your art business. So make this decision based on a lot of research and hopefully this video can help you. Uh, today I visited my friend's home and he has a studio inside of his home in the Dagao Art Zone and I had never been there so I thought it must be very interesting to go and check it out. So I went and I discussed for hours with his family. I also know his wife very well. So together we discussed the dynamics between the original works of art and the art print and how to manage them and how to sell them and it's a very interesting topic and I'm glad I went there. I got to see his uh, works, his art prints and some works in progress as well and I see that how meticulous his work is which is new to me because his special technique is based on Chinese gongbi, which is Chinese photorealism, a very uh, traditional way to paint paintings, Chinese style. It's, it's a very beautiful and I like gongbi more than anything else. And he blended with a touch of Renaissance modernism and it's the way that he mixed the both things and it's like, wow. And I really like those uh, concepts and he's very into it so he spent hours and hours investigating and coming up with an idea and maybe every month he can only produce a very very few works no matter how small because he puts all his heart and his love inside of each painting and it's just many process many layers and it's very very tedious to produce each work because it's very demanding so he can't produce so many works and each works of art he could sell it minimum twenty thousand dollars easily it's very hard also to get a hold of his original piece because it's immediately sold. So he decided to make some art prints because the demand is so high. Many collectors told him, I would love this work, but you already sold it to someone else. I would love to have a print if you could. So he started making those very high quality, very, very uh, limited edition art print that is like 10 copies or less, signed and numbered, and is printed with a very high resolution printer. Two weeks ago when I went to this photo equipment fair, I made a video on it as well, I saw an Epson printer and they can print amazing quality and when you see it, you couldn't tell if it was an original piece of art or an art print. So for those of you who are worried like, oh, you know, a print will not show the quality of my art, don't worry. If you take a proper photo or make a proper scan and you print it with high quality, high resolution printer, it can represent and project the original works just fine. Of course, you wouldn't want to make exact copy because it will damage the sales of the original works and it's not fair for the collectors who paid a lot of money to collect your original works. So you want to make some differentiation. For example, uh, the original work is four times larger than this art print. This is just one of the example. You can choose by size, which is the one of the most easy way to distinguish. Like print is smaller, original is larger. You can do it by perhaps other kind of like framing wise. You can do the original works like uh, paperback, but the art print as Aludi Bong or as posters, or you can choose the kind of support to show that uh, this is not the original works of art. Before talking about how many copies you would like to produce the print, you have to think about how many copies you want the original first. For example, in the case of my friend Jin Sha, he decided that he would only do one copy. And you may say, of course, original work is only one copy. That's not the case in many countries. For example, in France and in many countries in Europe, they follow the French system. Each original works of art can be reproduced up to 12 copies and they are still considered original. 12 copies, I don't mean that you copy it with a printer. No, you have to hand make 
like you just make exact work 12 times and you have to number it and you have to uh, just make sure that you declare that it's only 12 copies. For any other copies more than 12, it will be marked as a reproduction and you are not allowed to sell it as an original. This is the French law or you can also call it the 12 copy law. France has a lot of laws about it, so many countries follow this system. Unfortunately, in China, we don't have a law, we don't have a regulation to say what is original, what is reproduction then it has to do with your strategy and how you declare it openly, clearly, and you have to specify if you want to do it one copy, it's your right. But if you spend so much time investigating and coming up with this idea, study the colors, composition, and you want to market this work and you only do one copy, then you have to every time spend this much time investigating this, you know, each new work. I would encourage you to make more than one copy, but I wouldn't recommend you to make more than 12 copies, even if the law says you can make 50. I know artists in China would make 50 copies. This is too much. You're ruining your potential reputation. Well, if you have got some, if you make 50, still selling it as original, I don't think you have much reputation left, but yes, it will damage the potential of your art career. Coming back to the limited print, I think you can print anything from 10 to 50 copies, depending on the size, the way you sell it, you know, of course, the prices, the channels, even 100 copies would still consider it to be fair. But I wouldn't say 500 is too much. For example, the shop Yellow Corner is a global chain of uh, art prints, and they call it limited art print, signed, limited, sometimes numbered, sometimes not. I'm not very sure how they do it because in every country is a bit different. Uh, they call it limited and it's 500 copies. 500 copies and it's limited? Come on, this is not really a limit. I would say if you want numbered limited, stick to under 100 and you're still safe. Nobody would raise eyebrows. And then after that, you should consider this kind of passive print. I call it passive print is because I think you should do it passively, but so many artists do it actively. So what's the passive print idea? Is that using Society6, using Redbubble, Printful, Printify, all these kind of uh, large companies, that you use them as a management tool to produce uh, those prints so that you don't have to do it yourself. Depending on your time, I would say spend an hour setting up a store and then just run it passively. You don't have to spend more time. You don't need to know who is booking it. You don't need to worry about it. You just receive money. You lay in the bed if you wish. But of course, you have to do other works like promote your social media as an artist so that people can come and see what you do and be interested and buy your art, which is good for your original works as well. You don't have to uh, actually spend more time than what you normally need to do. And this kind of passive print could be a money-making machine for emerging artists who is slowly taking off because then uh, more and more people would love to have your work but couldn't afford it. You just sell them those prints for like 10 bucks, 50 bucks or whatever bucks that the platform decided to make depending on the size, the support, the shipping and anything and everything. And you don't need to worry about absolutely nothing. And I think this is a very good way to set up a three component, like the original works of art, the limited and signed, and the not limited and not signed, so that you can offer anyone that who is interested in your work, anyone who have 50 bucks or who have 50,000 bucks, just to sell them what they could afford and sell as many copies as possible. And you may say, wait, I don't want to sell as many copies. I don't need, you know, so much money or like I don't want to flood my own reputation, my trademark, my brand. This could be a concern, I would say, in the old times when um, printing was a taboo, like original works were you know, considered very precious, very good, and the machine is somehow evil and is taking the works away from the people. And the Industrial Revolution, I mean, come on, it has been what? How many hundreds of years? And today it is okay. It is a publicity. Imagine if you want to publish this as a publicity in a magazine, in an art magazine, you would even spend money you know, getting in touch with the magazine to do this you know, advertisement. And instead, you're having this poster shipping to someone's home and being paid for. 
yet you're just you know, having this outlet channel to push your brand. And I think it's a really good way to cultivate your potential collectors. And when those people grow up and have their good jobs and have the new house, and they would perhaps buy original works of art from you because they grew up watching your work on their wall. They grew up thinking that one day they would be able to afford a real piece of art from you. And, and it's a very good feeling as an artist, like to be longed for. And I think this is another really good reason for you to consider seriously, limited or not limited, signed or not signed, just to work your math and see how you want to do it depending on your market, your works, and think about it. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. I will get back to you. I'll be making a video every day on art, art career, and art business. Make sure you hit the subscription button and the bell not to miss the upcoming videos. And that's it for today. See you in the next video.